Friends, welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be talking about five PlayStation 4 platformers. Let's go. Like all of our other video game review videos, we're going to put the ESRB rating in the corner up here, or the PEGI rating, or the zero rating, depending on the region of the game. That way you know what you're getting into if you decide you want to purchase the game. The first game we're going to talk about in this video is called Steam World Dig. And there's actually seven options as far as language go that you can select from for this game. The premise is that your uncle has died and left you a mine. So you decide to become a miner and pick up where he left off. Not too many mining games out there, so yeah. As you go, you'll pick up upgrades that let you dig into harder rock and get more valuable gems to trade back in that town. There's two meters that you need to pay attention to. The first is your health bar, and the second is your light meter. You don't want to let your light run out. One thing to note is you're basically building the level as you go and you dig deeper. Don't completely mine everything out. You want to make vertical shafts with horizontal tubes connecting them. It makes the game much easier to get back to the surface when you do it that way. However, if you do get stuck, there is a self-destruct button that you can get to off of the pause menu. There is a limit to the number of items you can bring back to town. As you get upgrades though, your bags will get bigger and you'll be able to bring more back at one time. Overall, it's a fun little game, but it's definitely not more than seven hours of gameplay. They did make a second one that we will be covering in another video at some point in the near future. The second game in this video we're gonna discuss is Mega Man 11 and it's a great update to an already great franchise of video games. Firing up the game, you have four difficulty options to select from for your gaming enjoyment. The game is just like the good old fashioned side-scrolling Mega Man games of old, even down to the frustrating rooms that will take you some noodling to get past. The graphics are nicely done, and the overall styling definitely pays homage to the originators of the series. The story is definitely classic Mega Man with Wily vs. Dr. Light, but the addition of the double gears mechanic kicks it up a notch, and you will have to employ this mechanic during some gameplay. The first gear is an extra damage gear, while the second one slows down time to enable pulling off more tightly timed situations. Or you could just call a friend in to help you jump past an obstacle or five. The soundtrack is definitely poppy and upbeat throughout all the different levels. With Mega Man, when you defeat the boss of the stage, you will actually take their power. So when you beat Black Man, now you can do his ability. Or when you beat Bounce Man, you get the bounce ability. You get the point. Each one will help you in another level, make it a little bit easier for you to beat. So there might be a best order to go through the game with. I had a great time playing this game and would definitely recommend it for fans of the Mega Man franchise if you don't already have it or somebody that might be looking to try out a platformer for the first time. Third game on the list is Owlboy. And as far as languages go for Owlboy, you actually have 12 of them to choose from. Very multilingual. Owlboy is a beautiful, beautiful platformer. And it starts off nice and slow to let you get acclimated to the controls, which is very nice and handy. Though your teacher isn't exactly up on positive reinforcement, that's for sure, judging by his conversations with your character. The retro style pixel graphics are gorgeous, with the level of detail this game has from the waving grass to the parallax scrolling backgrounds, and even to the character's movements that has a gentle flow to them. The soundtrack definitely goes well to match the stage or area that you're in too. The puzzles here aren't too difficult to get through, but they can take a bit of trial and error to figure out, which does add to the fun of the game. You don't want puzzles that are too easy after all. The game's premise is that you're a mute that has to help protect your village from pirates. However, after failing to do so and finding an ancient owl relic, they send you on an adventure to help rescue the capital from air pirates. It's definitely a unique story. Some of the monsters in the game do take a little bit of tactics to take down. It's not just shoot first and ask questions later. So you'll need to think and see how best to deal with them. Overall, I would definitely recommend this game. If you haven't picked it up already, I recommend you do so, as it's a great addition to the platforming library of the PlayStation 4. The fourth game in this video that we're going to talk about is called Guacamelee. This is one of the few platforming games that has DLC. There's a character pack that you can pick up if that's of interest. Starting up the game, you select from two difficulty options, normal and hard. You play as Juan, a simple man who wanted to become a luchador, but apparently he only works in the agave fields. It's a celebration of the Day of the Dead, but something has gone horribly wrong, and it's up to Juan to save the world with the help of a luchador mask.
unique storyline here too. I really enjoyed the art style of the game as it's definitely something different. The music definitely has a Hispanic vibe to it and goes very well with the game. As you progress through, you'll come across statues that will grant you new abilities to take out the bad guys. You'll also come across large statue heads that will eventually give you the ability to fast travel all over the world, which definitely saves some time. Another aspect of the game is that it actually has very fast loading times, which definitely keeps you in the game mindset. It's definitely a fun platformer. Something else to bear in mind, there's talking sombrero wearing chickens. How can you go wrong with giant sombrero wearing talking chickens? I will definitely recommend this game. However, there's one thing to bear in mind. There's actually a guacamole pack where you actually get both the first and the second game. I would definitely look for that versus just picking up the first one as I think you can't pick up just the second one. It's you get one and two regardless. So you might save a few bucks going that way. Last game in the video is called Inside in Limbo. And really quickly, this is a really dark game, not just in overall color, but in tone and mood as well, both of them. Speaking to Inside first, pretty much everything in this game wants you dead, except the baby chicks. The baby chicks don't want you dead. There is no shortage of ways to die from the creepy masked men who just choke you out, or the dogs that tear you apart, or the worm infested crazy pigs, or the creepy spotlight robots with their electric shocking cables. This kid is having a serious bad day. It's not a super fast platformer, but it's more of a thinking platformer. It's interesting and the ending is quite unique. I'll leave it at that for those that want to experience it themselves. Moving on to Limbo, that's another dark game. As the name implies, you're in some sort of limbo. The game is all monochromatic, so don't expect any bright colors here other than white. Like Inside, it's a slower paced platforming where you're expected to do more thinking. There are some sections where timing is needed as well. As for the graphics, they do get across what the designers were trying to convey, a dark, lonely place that you're just trying to get through. It's a good little thinking platformer. However, I'm not a fan of the ending on this. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I just wasn't a fan. All right, friends, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a like. If you enjoy the content, hit the subscribe button so you get notifications of when we release our videos. Other than that, have a good one. Be good to each other. Thanks for watching. Stop the video.